Welcome. My name is Makiko Hirata. I call myself Dr. Pianist because I have a doctorate that I worked very hard for. And I also promote music as a healing agent. Today's program will focus on the universality of music. Um, and we will focus on two aspects of music, musical pulse that correlates to our heartbeats and footsteps and also vocal inflections that is universal. When our voices go up, we are excited, we have more tension, and when our voices go down, we are more relaxed. The first piece that we're going to hear today is called Sheep May Safely Graze. It was a Bach cantata originally for soprano, but Petri, a pianist in the 20th century, transcribed it for solo piano. And in it, you will notice a this constant repeated bass pattern uh, that reminds you perhaps of your own footsteps or maybe a little bit faster heartbeat or a mother tapping a baby. It begins like this. gives you this calm feeling and that's what I want us to feel as we share this piece. Uh, maybe you can tap yourself like a mother with a baby uh, with the bass line. Enjoy.
So we will continue this theme of a parental big figure with Schubert's very famous Ave Maria. And again, we have this constant the, you know, you know the familiar accompaniment that maybe reminds you of a rocking uh, of a mother, a baby, that gives us this sense of calm again. Here, Debussy's Reverie Dream. Um, and here again, the same kind of sort of hypnotic, let's say, um, relaxed motion 
that sort of reminds us of rocking. Okay, so in the Reverie, we focused on the rocking of the left hand accompanimental figure, but in the melody, this, this is fourth. This is a very sort of open, open sound um, that suggests things like hope or vastness, um, vision maybe. Um, and in famous pieces, people use this a lot, like um, I see trees of green, right? Or here comes the bride, right? 
right? Or happy birthday to you, right? It's interesting because all these pieces, right? Um, I see trees of green, right? And um, I. It's always, the fourth is always a jump to something bigger, right? And it's the same thing in this very famous Troy The first, the beginning opening fourth is just a sort of a jump board to go higher. And there is a song, Japanese song, called Akatombo, which means fire dragon, um, that no Japanese uh, grew up not singing. Everybody sings the song. This is a very nostalgic song thinking about our homeland. Um, and I'll play it a little bit because it, it's also like the Tromelai and like all the other pieces that begins with the fourth that reaps up Right? Um, so here's Akatombo.
note, it's... This sort of feeling of yearning, right? Um, or feeling nostalgic to remembrance of the things past. <laughs> it's universal. But another piece, another famous piece that opens with this fourth leap is Again, it goes to the big leap. Um, Chopin's Opus 10 number no. 3, it's one of his etudes, but he apparently told one of his students that this was the best melody he'd ever written. So.
with these small musical gestures having sort of universal associations. You know this piece. Another song that every Japanese person grew up singing, it's called Sakura, it means cherry blossom. This Sakura and Brahms, um, one of his latest works uh, in his life, Opus 16, number two, they're so similar, the melodies. It's kind of eerie. And I did a little research to see if Brahms could possibly have known the Japanese song Sakura. And really, there is no way he could have known the Japanese song.
So both Sakura and Brahms Opus 16 Number no. Two Intermezzo um, went went up, like wondering, like questioning, right? But what if it went down? Ah, uh, right. Tears or a sigh. Okay, so it's it's kind of sad. It goes to a resolution. Um, this figure is used in a piece by Federico Mompo, a catalan composer in the 20th century, called On a Drop of Water. So Mompo uses a technique called word painting. And the melody opens like this, with a gesture of falling second. And with this, he's trying to sort of depict a drop of water, as, as suggested in the title. But he does this. And he gives the melody to two other voices. So. And he juxtaposes them in a canon. That's a ripple. And to me, it's like he's saying, you're going to shed tear, but it's OK because it's going to evaporate. And you're going to shed tears again, but it's OK because it's going to create ripples. It's going to resonate with others. Mompo's on a drop of water. We are all interconnected. We went over a little bit about the universality of 
mother's steps or heartbeats or footsteps, right, as we can hear in the musical beats. And also the universality of fourth up or second down or second going up. Uh, different musical gestures having um, similar emotional uh, feelings uh, in different musical cultures. I will end this program with three very famous pieces of piano music and I would like you to now think for yourself about what these pieces could have meant to Schubert, to Schumann, and lastly to Liszt. Enjoy!